This video is about the cyclic redundancy check. This is another means of error detection in network transmission, and some would refer to it as another form of checksum, but we'll use distinct terms to describe the two processes. So the way a cyclic redundancy check, or CRC, works is that if we want to send k bits of information, we will create a frame that contains n bits, and it's important that n be greater than k because those extra bits will create what we call a frame check sequence. So these are some bits that we will append to the end of the data to create the final frame that we actually send. So because of how this is constructed, the FCS is always in minus k bits in length. Now to compute this, we will use modulo 2 arithmetic, which basically means that we'll be doing a lot of XOR operations, uh, where XOR is exclusive OR, a common operation in digital circuits. So here are some quick examples of modulo 2 arithmetic. Um, what's interesting about it is that addition and subtraction are actually the same. Uh, if I'm adding these two values, I really just interpret this as an XOR operation. And so the exclusive OR of different values is 1, and the exclusive OR of the same value is 0. So this comes out to be 0, 1, 0, 1. And oddly enough, if I do the same operation with a minus, we also interpret the minus as an XOR, so we get the same result. So that's 0, 1, 0, 1. And in a moment, we'll be doing multiplication and division, but I'll hold off in describing that until I show our example. Now, the data, D, that we want to send in this example will be the following sequence of bits. So in this example, we happen to have 10 bits we want to send, but you could imagine that real data frames will be much larger. And we will also have a predetermined pattern, P, of a set length. Now I'm going to choose the following pattern, and this happens to be six bits long, but you should note that this pattern is fairly arbitrary. Now it is important that all of the machines communicating using this CRC approach all know what this pattern is. So the sender and the receiver both have to know what this pattern is for this approach to work but the pattern can be anything. Now, the consequence of these choices um, are that when we create the frame check sequence, which are the bits appended to the end, it will have a length of five. So it's essentially one bit shorter than the pattern. Now here is the data I want to send. We're going to append the frame check sequence to the end, but we first have to compute what it is. The way that we'll do this is we'll append five zeros to the end of this, and so these spots will eventually be filled in by our FCS. And what we're going to do is divide this using modulo 2 arithmetic by the pattern. And so recall that the pattern is 110010. So modulo 2 arithmetic is a little bit different with division than normal division. Um, it's a bit easier, in fact, because all we have to do is find the bit sequence here that is the same length as this one. So this pattern is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bits long, so we go 6 bits in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we put a 1 there. 
Now, it's important that the length of these sequences is the same, but notice that when I multiply this by 1, I'm going to write it below as a normal long division, I'll have 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. This number is actually larger than that one, so you would not be allowed to do this with normal long division. But with modulo 2 arith arithmetic, it is okay. So multiplication is the same. 1 times that value yields this result. And then we subtract, as you normally do, except our subtract operation is an XOR operation. So we do the difference X using XOR. So this is a 1, that's a 1, a 1, 1, a 1. These values are the same, so XOR says they're 0. Now notice that the result is 5 bits long, which means this number cannot be divided into it. So that shows that this process worked. So because it does not fit, we will bring down a 0 from there. And now we have a 6-bit number. And this result can fit into there once. So we multiply by 1. We get 110010 down here. And then we do XOR subtraction, which gives us 0011. And then here, we have 00 again. Now notice that I'm not doing the zeros on the left because they're unnecessary padding zeros. Uh, the number essentially starts at the first one that occurs when you're coming at it from the left side. So now we have four bits, clearly less than that. So I'll bring down a zero. And now we have five bits. Well, according to modulo two arithmetic, this result still does not fit into there. So I'll put a zero here and I'll bring down this one to try to make the number large enough. Now we do have six bits. And so because we have six bits, we can multiply this by one. We put this number down here, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero. And then we'll do XOR, which is subtraction in modulo two arithmetic. We'll have one, one, and then the rest are all zeros. These positions are all the same. So I don't need to write those zeros out. And I need to keep bringing zeros down until I get six bits down here. So I'll bring each of these down. And for each of these that I bring down, I have a zero appearing up here, except for this last one, because now I have six bits here. And I can multiply that by one. And I'll get this result down here. And I do XOR again to get one zero and then a bunch of padding zeros which I don't write and then I'll bring down zeros but notice at this point that although I've brought down all the zeros that remain I have not reached six bits now to do more I would have to go beyond the in this case binary point but I'm not going to do that because this number here is actually the result that we care about the frame check sequence is the remainder of this division using modulo 2 arithmetic. So I'm going to put a 0 here. So I am going to pad it out because my frame check sequence has to be 5 bits long in this example. So this sequence of bits is my frame check sequence. Now this is specifically constructed so that I will be able to decode on the receiving end whether or not the transmission was sent without error. So what does the sender actually receive? Well, first it takes the original data, which is these first 10 bits. So I'll put that down here. And then these five bits at the end that in our calculation were just zeros get replaced by the frame check sequence. So I'll write in 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So this portion of the transmission is the frame check sequence. This is the actual frame sent by the source.
So here, once again, is what the source actually transmits. Now the question is, how does the receiver know whether or not what it receives is correct? How does it know that no errors occurred? Well, it will do a similar process. It will also perform modulo 2 division using the pattern. And this is why both the sender and the receiver need to know what that pattern is. So I'll write that over here as before. And we essentially go through the same process. But because of these values we put at the end, we'll get a different result. So the first few steps are identical, so I'm actually going to speed through those. Now at this point of the process, something different actually happens. Because the frame check sequence inserted a 1 into a position where there were previously all zeros, we're going to get a different result. When this 1 comes down here now, the value we're dividing into is 110010. Well, that happens to be identical to our pattern. So when I put the 1 here and multiply that out, I'll get 110010. The XOR of a value with itself is always zero, and then we have nothing left to bring down but zeros, which means that the final remainder of this modulo 2 division is zero. And so this is how the receiver knows that the frame did not get garbled or transformed during transmission. When the remainder here is all zeros, then the receiver can be reasonably certain that errors did not occur in transmission. Now it should be said regarding both this approach and the previously discussed checksum that very unusual error patterns can, in theory, cause garbled data to still have a correct, in this case, frame check sequence. But that is very unlikely, which is why the CRC is a powerful method for error detection.